my black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like at the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality's temple. Reality's temple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like at the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality's temple. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and perhaps many other places. On the internet, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm. Angel Snub Number Seven. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. It is very sad, and perhaps it is out of sheer ignorance, or perhaps it is an attempt to direct attention away from ourselves but in this society we have many persons who are of a self-righteous nature and they can always see the flaw the error what is wrong in other people but they can never see the error of their ways but yet and still most of them have been influenced by biblical or christian teachings that make clear to you that your righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of god so while you condemn others so why you look down upon others to make yourself feel as though you are better, you are greater, you are wiser, more intelligent, more righteous. Your own God tell you your righteousness is as filthy rags. But we do this because we know that we suck. We know deep down in our heart that we ain't no better than the people we're talking about. But in order for us to feel better, we have to direct attention away from ourselves so you can't look at me. Because if you look at me, then you'll tell me about my fault, my error. Then I'll begin to realize that my righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God or anybody. So you have a group of people who look at this nation called the United States of America with all its problems and instead of blaming society instead of blaming the condition the culture that you created the citizens of this nation the government the leaders instead of blaming the leadership instead of blaming yourself the society the neighborhood the teachers, the senator, the president, instead of blaming the culture itself, we seek to divide and we want to target certain members of the society so that we don't look as though we're guilty of anything. So everything immoral, everything that is unrighteous in American society, we want to blame it on black women. We want to blame it on the poor. We want to blame it on the mentally ill. We want to direct attention away from ourselves. 
we want to talk about on this video the about the sexual immoral behavior of the people of the United States of America regardless to your race regardless to your sexual orientation did you know that sex is legal in America it is so everybody y'all can be happy y'all can have some sex okay it is legal to commit what religious people call fornication and adultery it is not against the law it is only held against you if you were part of a marriage and then that uh, claim of fornication or adultery is used against you in a court of law during a divorce proceeding some type of marriage conflict but fornication and adultery is allowed in the United States so you can run around and lay up with anybody anything because some of y'all don't have no problem with laying around with animals that's legal as far as I know you can you can sleep with snuffy or lassie or Ren Tin Tin I, I guess that's legal but in the society of uncivilized people the people that y'all call savages when we study the savages the uncivilized you will see that sexual contact is denied those who do not go through man and womanhood training. You must prove to society that you are able and you are responsible for your sexual behavior. This is among the savages and uncivilized people. So in a savage place, you don't hear about abortions. You don't hear about domestic violence. All the all these things that are the ills of civilized society. Pedophilia, domestic abuse, and all these different you don't hear about all that going on in many civilized cultures because you must prove that you are a man and a woman before you can even have sex or interact with the opposite sex <laughs> in America I know when I was a young boy I was encouraged to be a fornicator at the same time there was a double standard because the young women was expected to hold on to their virginity to be pure but if you're going to teach the young man how to be a whore, who is he going to be a whore with? Another man? So if you're teaching your young boys to be a whore, then somebody has to be his victim. Is the young girls, but at the same time, the young girls are expected to be virgins and clean. Don't make any sense. You want your young boys to run around, and that's a sign of manhood for them to run around and try to sleep around with every young girl or woman that they can. But at the same time, the young women are expected to be clean and pure. So when he's finished whoring around, he is the first whore. When he's finished whoring around, how can a man be a whore? The definition for a whore is simply an immoral person. Another definition of whore is somebody, male or female, that has sex for money. Another definition of whore is an unscrupulous person. Somebody that don't have no kind of scruples. You just do anything. A sellout. You live in a nation where the atmosphere is saturated with sex. Let's teach our babies about sex in the third grade. The movies is filled with sexual images. The cartoons are filled with uh, 
uh, symbolic sexual images. The songs and the dance, everybody is, 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 is encouraged and influenced to be sexualized. Not married, but fornicators and adulterers. So if you are so if you are a nation and a society that is producing fornicators and adulterers, what do you expect out of your nation? Why do you fools expect good things to come out of fornication and adultery? Adulter adultery. <laughs> you expect a immoral messed up society. Black women did not create fornication and adultery. The poor did not create fornication and adultery. In fact, the powers that be encourage you to be sexualized because while you concentrate on your vagina, while you concentrate on your penis, then they can do whatever they want to in order to control and manipulate the society. And the babies that you get out of your promiscuity. They take your children and send them to war. They take your children and put them in factories, giving you little or nothing. They take your babies out of your sexual deviancy and use them for what they please, not for what you want. And you don't care as long as you in the bed with somebody. As long as you can brag about how many women you slept with. How much money I make. Because I slept with these men. So if you live in a culture of deviancy, why do y'all expect good things? So who created and who allowed these things to go on? The black man and woman, the descendants of slaves born in America, we was kidnapped and forced into this society. We have nothing to do with what you can and cannot do in society. We did not create the Bible. We did not create the Constitution. There is nothing of societal behavior that you can blame black folks for. This is designed, this is encouraged by the racist Caucasian pink people of America. They control the education. They control the movies. They control the religion. They control everything. They mold the mentality of the people in this country. So you cowards that blame black women for the immoral behaviors of the society. You are unscrupulous. You have no scruples because you know better. But you won't favor from those who destroyed your people that made your women the way they are and made you the Uncle Tom Sambo Coon Dark European slave that you are. So we want to direct attention away from ourselves because when it's all said and done, the bottom line is if you live in mud, everybody gets mud on them. You and them and all of us. Because the society... In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host, known here on the internet as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub Seven. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik. Even wrong. Woo, man. Do you know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> it's self righteous people. They come as a flood on the internet, especially on YouTube, where they can express their self righteous behavior 
on video or in the comment section. So holy, so holier than thou, so divine, so good. But then one day they interact or they run into a person like me and I don't have to know you. But I know that you are not holier than thou. I know that you are not divine. I know that you live in the same muddy, filthy, nasty society that I do. So no matter how you present yourself, since I know that I'm covered in mud, I know that you also are covered in mud. But you have these countless self-righteous persons who believe, well, yeah, I admit I live in mud. Yeah, I admit I'm not perfect. But see, I only have mud on my arm. You have mud on the on all of your on all of your body, bottom parts or whatever. You have more mud on you than I do. Anybody who has ever been or fell in a pig pen, a muddy pig pen, regardless how little or how much mud, how filthy you get, everybody that fell in the mud stink. Everybody that fell in the mud has to take a bath. So, these self-righteous persons, y'all really need to quit or you need to stay away from me because I'm going to expose you for the idiot you really are. And that's why so many don't really mess with me. They only target and direct themselves to other self-righteous people who want to feel good about themselves because in reality, all of you know that you stink. And I know that you stink. So who do they always target for their tirades? Who do they always use as an example? They always target those who are weakest. Who are the weakest in society? The ones who are weakest in society are those who are poor, the ignorant, the illiterate, the so-called mentally ill, women, children, animals, anybody that can't defend themselves. This shows you not only are self-righteous people arrogant and egotistical, but they are a bunch of cowards. So most times I don't have problems with that type of person coming around me because they know what's going to happen to them. Now, there are a group of males. There are a group of people, but basically a gang of black males who attack black women because they're cowards, of course. Then they direct their attention to thugs which are usually males you can be actually you can be a female and be a thug it's just an attitude it's a behavior it's a way of living your life but we're going to talk about male black thugs he's a thug look at him so when we talk about the male black thug how do oh how do oh how would we Describe them. Of course, they come from a poor background. Some of them make good money now because if they sell enough drugs, if they have enough prostitutes on the street, they can they maybe can make a good living. But most times the thug is poor, the thug is illiterate, the thug is stupid, the thug has a violent nature, thugs are lazy. Those have many children, they abandon their babies, they, they, not, they don't care nothing about fatherhood. A lot of them, they sag their pants and blase. We could go on and on, but we, we generally know the thug, when they talk about the thug, 
Y'all black women need to leave the thugs alone. Leave the thugs. The thug this and the thug that. We talking about the poor thug. The poor black male. But you never hear them talk about the rich thug. The middle class thug. The thug that comes from two parent households. I'm going to say that again. The thug that comes from two parent households. Because once you become an adult and even as a teenager, your parents is limited in what they can and cannot do. If a young man is determined to live a decadent life, an immoral life, there's nothing mama or daddy can do, whether it is a single black mother in a household or whether there is two parents. There's nothing that you can do. Y'all need to stop being silly. Society's influence. And there are many other factors that determine how a person thinks. You can listen to mama. You can listen to father. You can listen to a single mother. And you can also choose not to listen to them. There is nobody on this planet that wants to produce raggedy children. Ragged children. But some of y'all think that the single mother, that's what she want to do. I want all my children to be criminals. I want all my daughters to be whores and prostitutes. I want all my sons in jail somewhere. Y'all a bunch of self-righteous vagabonds, idiots. But let us go back to the college-educated male. Thug. Rich thugs. The rich black male thug. The middle class black male thug. They don't talk about them. Because they have money. They have status. And if they want to, they can defend themselves. The rich black male thug. What do they do different from the poor? They abandon their children. Matter of fact, because I have money, because I'm rich, because I have status, because I have education, because of what I am, Sometimes makes it easier to go from woman to woman. Because many of these women are materialistic. And they want to be part of success. So I'm successful. And I'm a thug, but they won't call me a thug. Because I have money. I'm driving a Mercedes Benz. I work at a bank. I have a college degrees on my wall. And just because I have money don't mean I'm going to pay child support. Find you a, a, some other cat to take care of them babies. I could care less. And I have, I have the money to pay the child support. I ain't paying you nothing. You was dumb enough to lay up with me. Now you suffer the consequences. These male black thugs, they have college degrees. They come from two-parent household. Explain that to me. Some of them on their jobs, in the corporate world, or wherever they may be. They know how to dress, but when they leave their job, they wear sagging pants, they talk ghetto, they know how to go from corporate language to ghetto language. You don't talk about them. It's always about the poor guy that's out there. These guys still, some of them do have criminal records, some of them are guilty of what you call white collar crimes, writing bad checks, uh, forgery, things of this nature, white collar crimes, stealing money through paperwork. You don't talk about them, and when we, and when we think about thugs, we only think about the poor brother selling drugs on the corner that is charismatic, who has some swag, Able to seduce and be with all these different women, have these babies, but you have rich guys that do the same thing. See, the thing about this, 
is that immoral behavior living in society which is muddy, nasty, violent, filthy, and profane. That's why many of y'all can't help it. Y'all have to say mother this, kiss my this, and mother, and you talk all nasty and vile because that's the society that you live in. You are just as muddy. You have to say damn, you have to say ass, you have to you have to be nasty and vile. You can't help it. No matter how holy you are, no matter how Christian you are, because that's the, the society that you come out of. Immoral behavior, a nasty, vile society affects you no matter what your gender is, no matter what your class is, no matter what your sexual orientation is. But, of course, the self-righteous people, they don't want to see it that way. Because in order to see it that way, they have to concentrate on cleaning up the mud that they have. And it's easier to tell somebody about their mud than you take a bath yourself. And above all, you have poor people that you make mockery of them because they have food stamps or whatever. And you see that poor person trying to sell their their uh, uh, food stamp card in the shopping mall. Who do you think buying those stamps? People that have money. They want to get over, so they'll buy food stamps on the cheap. Y'all know that. And many of these people come from two-parent households. Get out of here with that foolishness. Y'all so silly and stupid to me. That's why you don't want to approach me, because I, I can think beyond y'all ignorance, because that's what it is. You have to be ignorant. You really have not truly thought about the... In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub Seven. I am y'all's brother. No doubt. And hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I am very disappointed in us as a people that we continue to fall for the same old trickology, the same old okie doke that is presented for us to feed upon by our enemies who are the racist pink people of this nation. It is sad that after all these hundreds of years, it is sad with all our knowledge, all our education, we still fall victim to the same old, same old of divide and conquer. It is amazing to me that when the races direct their media towards us to make it look like we are the cause of all America's problems. We are the most immoral people in this nation. We are the greatest murderers. We are the greatest fornicators, adulterers. We are the trash of American society. Here we go making countless videos to support and verify what these races put on their screens. We do it. It is the old Willie Lynch syndrome. At one time, the slave master had to be really deceitful in order to, de to divide the black man from the black woman, the black woman from the black man, the parents from their children, and the, and the family from our elderly, and just divide us up as a people based on all kinds of things from lighter skinned blacks did not like the darker skinned blacks or the house in the field Negro. We still fall for the same old okie doke So the racist 
direct attention and put it on our ill behaviors when the whole nation, all of America, is filled with pedophiles. All of America is filled with uh, fornicators and adulterers and, and all kinds of nasty people. But now black folks don't have to be tricked. You don't have to be deceived. Just pointing it in that direction and we'll do it ourselves. We will blame us for the filth and the immoral behaviors and the crime in America. But the reality is, even though the races control the media, there, there is so much information and, and news programs that's out here you will see them do the same thing. Their women are also giving birth to babies that are unwed. And even if the races do marry, within the next two or, two or three months, they are divorced. So what was the sense for them to be married to begin with? America has a almost 95% divorce rate. What does that tell you? So what? You got married. My mama and daddy was married. They ain't married now. Matter of fact, daddy might mess around and kill your mama because you live in a society of murderers. And you can find murderers in the poor. You can, fall, you can find murderers in the rich and the middle class. Every ill, every ill behavior that they try to pin on black people the descendants of slaves born in America, you will find in all in all the races in America. But they concentrate on us to direct attention away from their evil. And you fall for the same old okie doke. You should be shame of yourself to be so ignorant in 2013. We have this self-righteous complex. You think that you better than another person. At the same time, most of y'all have a religious background. Many of you call yourselves Christians. And the first thing, one of the lessons in your Christianity that they teach you is judge not, least ye be judged. But you make videos and you talk out of your raggedy mouth and you judge people every day. But you don't judge yourself. Then you mess around and run into somebody like me. And then I show you that you are not as holy and righteous and pure as you believe you are. Then you want to get upset because you can judge others, but you don't want to be judged. And your scriptures tell you, judge not, least ye be judged. There is nobody who is so holy and righteous. Your God tells you, that your righteousness is as rags in his eyes or her eyes. Now, all this to say what? We need to stop judging folks. We need to stop being so dang self-righteous. You ain't got it like that. Because if, if the majority of y'all that claim that you're so holy and self-righteous, why is the world in the condition that it's in? And how come you can't do nothing to change it since your God is so powerful? Since your God is the all-knowing, your God makes the sun, makes the earth, but can't change the human condition after thousands of years. Something is wrong. You've been taught wrong. You have wrong knowledge. I was locked up in the nut house with so-called mentally ill people. And I had this attitude also because there was nothing wrong with me. How could you be mentally ill like that? I hear your story, but that couldn't, that, I don't understand why you fell victim to your mental illness or your trauma. I was locked up with a lot of different kinds of people. And you would not even know what, who and what they really were at one time. I was locked up with a Russian scientist 
This guy worked on nuclear weapons. I, I was locked up with a guy that was a mathematician. He could do it. Didn't even have to write the figures on a piece of paper. He could do it all up here. Just like that. I don't care what the equations were. There was a brother I was locked up with. A highly decorated soldier. All kinds of medals. I was locked up with a, another guy. Caucasian uh, man. He was a locksmith. Every time you turn around, he was opening the doors at the mental institution. They couldn't stop him. He'll sit there and pick it. And he could pick the lock and the alarm wouldn't even go on. The door just opened. That's how bad, that's how much knowledge he had. But he was in a mental institution because something in their lives went wrong. You don't know what might happen to you when enough stress, when enough trauma falls upon you. There are people, and we, our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our pets, Things in our life pass away from us. And that brings us hurt and pain. We go to a funeral. We say our goodbyes. And we move forward in life. There are those people. Who are unable to do that. They can't move forward in life. That death. That hurt. That pain. Stays with them. They can't get over. The loss of a relative, a mother, a wife, a sister, brother, or a pet. These men, this scientist, this mathematician, this highly decorated officer, this locksmith, all of them, something in their lives, and when I talked to them, there was something of, tra of a traumatic circumstance that caused them just to lose it. They couldn't get over something in their life. I had an uncle after the passing of his wife. He never was the same. He was, before the passing of his wife, he was a classy kind of guy. Liked to dress in suits, drive a fancy car, had a pretty house. And, but then after his wife died, the love of his life, he didn't care about life no more. He didn't care about himself. Next thing you know, he's a bum in the street eating out of garbage cans. Not because he couldn't do better, because he suffered trauma in his life that he could not get over. He lost the only thing that gave him purpose in life and didn't really want to live no more. Y'all got to understand, just because you see a person, how they act and how they behave. I'm not going to give excuses for ill behavior. There is nobody that's born that wants to be a criminal. There's no girl that's born that wants to be uh, 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 a whore or a prostitute. There's no male that wants to grow up to be no thug, even though, even though it is glamorized. But we don't want to be negative things in our hearts. That's that's not what we strive for. But something happened in people's lives that caused them to be who and what they are. Just like you doing what you doing, because there's something that influenced you. Something that you suffered, something that you experienced that caused us to be who we are. And those of us who think that we are better, we judge other people because they wasn't able to handle it or we don't understand the experience. We don't know what happened to them. So we become self-righteous. We become judge and jury and executioner. And you should be ashamed of yourself. Because some of y'all going through the same thing and y'all taking psychiatric, <laughs> psycho drugs. Yes, you are. More and more people are taking psycho drugs. Some of y'all taking psycho drugs and don't even know it. Psycho drugs come in all kinds of forms. And you don't even know you're taking psycho drugs. Many of you are depressed. Many of you feel depression. Many of you don't see your purpose in life. It's a, it's all, it's a mental thing. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to make a part two 
So y'all just hold on there. But we have to, again, I can't emphasize self-righteous behavior. We got to watch that. Even the religious teachings, it's one. Now, I want us to think a little bit and get off the self-righteous train. What is trauma? Now, as an individual, just look at us as individuals and trauma. What is trauma? Trauma is simply an injury or a wound. Post, uh, post uh, traumatic stress disorder. Is that how you say it? Post traumatic stress disorder. The stress of being in a dangerous environment where you're seeing people that you're close to being killed. The destruction of property all around you. Something, you, you are in an environment that's terrifying because your life could be taken at any time. So you have soldiers coming from Afghanistan and Iraq. And you have soldiers that's from the Vietnam War and World War II maybe. Korean War. You have men who are suffering under that type of stress. Many of these men come out of the military with this disorder, but they go on to live what we might view as ordinary lives. But you will never be ordinary living in an environment where you see death and destruction. How can you ever be ordinary when that situation, war, that's a, not ordinary. That's not normal. But there are many veterans from these wars. They commit suicide. They can't handle the trauma. And many of us will judge them. But we don't know how we would respond if we were in an environment that we saw our best friend right next to us have their brains blown out in front of us. Bullets and bombs blowing all around you. You are in a very hostile environment. And we do know Chicago is bad, but it's nothing compared to a for real war zone. We do know that. Trauma causes Drinking and, and people turn into drugs. And through your drinking and your drug, these things damage your brain. This is what you see in middle institutions. All over this country. That's what you see people on the street talking to themselves. That's what you might see in yourself. Brain damage. That's why we keep falling for the same old okie doke from these races. Many people, you might think you can handle the stress, but what you can handle, somebody else can't. And what somebody else can handle, you probably couldn't. I want to speak really quick about Chris Brown and Rihanna. Even though they are 24, 25, 26 years old now, basically, they are still children. They are still children because they were not parented. They became successful early in their life as children and they were not parented. They was looking, they was they have been looked upon as somebody to pimp to make money from. They found each other. And Chris Brown did cause Rihanna harm and maybe she is at fault or whatever. I don't know exactly how that story goes, but it is clear that there is some type of love between these two. And if they are children of trauma, Rihanna understands Chris' trauma, his stress, his problems, and clearly 
Chris understands her. So being children of trauma, being in love, they are drawn to one another. And we want to judge them, but you don't walk in their shoes and you don't want to understand what's happening here. Only thing you under, only thing you tripping up, oh, he beat Rihanna up. But at the same time, black people in America, we have been beaten up in this nation for 400 years. And we make up every excuse in the world to forgive and forget what Caucasian people do then and what they still do today. But you have a problem with Chris Brown. You have a problem with Rihanna. Judge not, least ye be judged. Nobody is born on this planet that wants to be a bad person, a negative person. They, anybody who was in their right state of mind, that's the key. If you were born in your right state of mind, are we born in our right state of mind to begin with? No, we're not. We're born through stress. We're born through trauma. Black people living in America for 400 years. We've lived under great stress. We've lived under pro uh, trauma. We become depressed for so long. Don't you know that this that feeling that becomes part of your very DNA makeup? That's why we can tolerate being in a fifth class citizenship position in America. That's why we can help those who hurt us because we are sick. We are under stress. There's another syndrome for us. I believe one of our psychiatrists coined the term or the, or the description post-traumatic slave syndrome because only a slave would want to live with their master and their children because we have been traumatized you are sick and now we're living in this great big 48 state mental institution only a traumatized person could tolerate living in a nation where all your work all your intelligence, everything that you do, don't benefit your neighborhoods, don't benefit yourself or your children. It benefits other people. You and I, we only exist to benefit the Asians and the Indians and the Africans and all these other suckers that come in our neighborhood and of course the racist pink people. We exist just to benefit others and we can't do nothing about it because we're traumatized. We are a traumatized people for hundreds of years. We watch black men and women and children. We watch them being raped. We were made to watch. Watch. We're going to beat Kuta Kinta. His name is Toby. Bring all the slaves out. Watch us beat him. You're going to say your name, boy. We were made to watch. The, the, the lynchings, the beatings, the rape, the tar and feathers. We suffered great discrimination and still do it to this day. It's part of our DNA. We are a traumatized people. And you expect great things from a traumatized, mentally ill, mentally sick people. Judge not, least ye be judged. How are you going to judge somebody who don't understand what has happened to them? Chris Brown said that he came from a family where his mother was abused. Many of us, perhaps we look over it and we saw our mother being abused by the father. Sometimes the, the mother abuses the father. That's trauma. Who wants to see their mother beat up? That bothers me till this day. I had to watch my father beat up and fight my mother. Still to this day, it bothers me. That's part of the reason why I would stand for black women more so than black men. Black men just be able to stand on their own anyway. You don't need nobody's support. Stand up and be who you are. You was designed to stand up alone 
if necessary. You are the foundation of the house. If the foundation of the house need help, then how can the how can the house stand? I don't make excuses for ill behaviors. But when we become self-righteous, when we become arrogant, we can look at what happened to other people, but we don't look at ourselves. Nobody wants to be bad. For hundreds of years, black people in America, the descendants of slaves, they call us savage. They say that we suffer low IQ. We suffer depression because we feel helpless. I'm a slave. I can't change my condition. I was born a slave. I'm, I'm going to die a slave. Ain't that, de de uh, ain't that a depression? A depressive type thought to have? So you get to the point where many of us, we feel as though we are nothing. So I don't want to be a hoe, prostitute. I don't want to be a thug. I don't want to be all these bad things. But now I got to the point because I suffer trauma. I don't care no more. So I will smoke myself to death. I will drink myself to death. I will drug myself to death. Give me some vagina all day. Give me some penis all day. Because I don't care no more. I need some money. I don't care nothing about working. I go rob and steal. Put me in a jail. At least y'all take care of me now. I don't have to worry about the other stress of paying bills and all this other bull crap that y'all call normal. Because I know I'm not normal. I'm suffering a mental illness. I'm suffering under post-traumatic slave syndrome. So before we judge poor Chris Brown and poor Rihanna, let us try to understand what has happened to them. Let us try to understand what has happened to us as a people. We are an, an entire people that have been traumatized. Trauma is an injury or a wound. And that which happened during slavery over 300 years, the wound has not healed. It's still here. And you can pretend to be well, but your actions show that you are not well. Well, 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 well. You are not. We are not a well people. And let us, above all, let us stop exploiting ourselves. Let us stop allowing these racist tricksters to use us to attack our own people. When they want to attack us, then you point you point to them and let them know you're a murderer, you're a fornicator, you're a doctor, you're a drunk, you're a pedophile. In the name of our ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the <laughs> Realities Tip on Earth. Of course, I'm the host. <laughs> I'm just trying to be a little different in my opening. I'm the host, the Angel Snuffing Up Seven, and uh. I'm known here as the mighty, mighty Angel Snub Nub 7 with a mm. And I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. <laughs> you want to know something, brothers and sisters? The descendants of slaves born in America. Now, I have been on YouTube and on the internet now, I know since 2008, and when you are saying something that nobody is attracted to, nobody is listening to, nobody cares who you are, 
But when you begin to say things that is out of the norm and people, not only from your audience, is listening to you, but people from all over the world, no matter what race, sexual orientation, gender, when they begin to focus on a message that is outside of the norm, then that message becomes a threat to those who are in power and it becomes a threat to those who benefit from society just the way that it is, even though they claim every day and vote for Obama, we won't change. But really don't want change, we just want things to be the way they used to be. But things can't stay the way they used to be. You used to be in a diaper, urinating and defecating on yourself. You used to drink nothing but milk or Similac. Gone are those days. What goes up must come down. However, in the universe, it seems as though some things can stay steady for look like eons. But that is not true in our universe. According to the scientists, this great sun that we have known for thousands of years, scientists say that one day it will burn out. What will happen to the life on this planet when that sun goes out? But in the meantime, we must survive. In the meantime, we must live. So it is about living. The black man and woman in America, it's been a long time since we have lived. We have been a dead people, void of the sun, at least for the last 400 years. We are mentally dead made deaf, dumb, and blind. But since we live in a ever-changing universe, that which was dead now becomes reincarnated and brought back to life. Not as they what they once was, but now a completely new being. A true example of reincarnation from a people that was murdered a long time ago. I want to say to you, I want to say to us that no matter how much I am made mockery of, how much I am attacked, in fact, I sort of enjoy it. I embrace it. It does not bother me. The only thing that can hurt me is real truth. And real truth is something that I embrace. Sometimes people attack. Sometimes they